Howdy folks, welcome to the first video of the Spectroscopic Data in Chemistry AS91388 Flipped Learning Classroom. Um, I'll get straight into it. Um, we're going to be learning about spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is a science of identifying organic compounds through the use of various uh, scientific techniques. Basically, if you have a organic compound you don't know and you don't know what it is and you can't tell through touch, taste, smell, etc., um, you can put it into a machine and the various types of the machines and they all spit out different types of graphs. The three types we're going to be looking at are mass spectroscopy, which goes based off of the mass of different fragments of uh, our compounds, IR spectroscopy, which looks at the different types of bonds that are present, and 13C NMR spectroscopy, which looks at the different number of carbon environments in different molecules. More on those later on. But before we get into those different types of spectroscopy, we need to talk about what an organic compound is. Um, some of you will have had organic chemistry before, but many of you will not. So I will do some revision. Organic chemistry is a study of compounds that are mostly made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, with sometimes other things, nitrogen pretty frequently, halogen sometimes, and sometimes other stuff. Um, and these are important to us as people because they are what we are made of. Humans are made of organic compounds. We interact with organic compounds. Poisons are organic compounds. Flowers and plants and animals are all made of organic compounds. They're what we interact with. They're what have impact on our body for the most part. And we have names for all these different organic compounds. There are thousands and thousands, millions of them. We name them based on their size, i.e. how long the longest single chain of carbons is, and their functional groups, i.e. the bits that are not just long chains of carbons, so what are those? And um, based on the combination of those two things, we come up with a name for the compound. And they come in different families, and each family has different compounds within it. When we're naming the size of the carbon chain, we don't name that in English, because why would we do something like that? Instead, we have a more complicated, well, a different system. And that is this system here that you may be familiar with. Um, the shortest carbon chain, that is a single carbon surrounded by four hydrogens, is called a meth group. Two carbons, each with three hydrogens on them, is an eth group. Four, uh, sorry, three carbons is prop, four is but, five is pent, six is hex, seven is hept, eight is oct, nine is non, ten is dec, continues on that way. We mostly don't deal with anything bigger than eight in this class. To give you an example, um, the first family of organic compounds we deal with is called alkanes. Alkanes are um, just carbon and hydrogen, and they do not have anything else present, and they're all single bonds. We call this ethane because it has a chain of two carbons and nothing else present. Alkenes are similar, except they have a double bond present between two of the carbons, but still just carbon and hydrogen present. And we call we would call this one here ethene because it's got two carbons, an eth, and then an ene because it's a double bond. If there were three, it would be or sorry, if there were one, it would be methene. I guess you can't have a double bond, double bond in methene. So methene doesn't exist. Strike that one. Alcohols. Again, similar in that they only have single bonds, but they have an oxygen present, and that oxygen is in a hydroxide group. This one would be called ethanol because it has two carbons in the longest chain, and then a hydroxide group on the end. Acids, very similar again, in that they have carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, but now they have two oxygens, one of them double bonded and the other one in a hydroxide group. So double bond, oxygen, hydroxide group. This one is ethanoic acid because it has two carbons, one, two, and then a hydroxide group and a double bond oxygen present. Esters are Similar again in that they've got an oxygen and a double bond, sorry, single bond and double bond oxygen, but they don't have a hydroxide group. Instead, in the place of the hydrogen, they have a whole other uh, organic chain. So the oxygen is in a carbon sandwich. Esther loves to eat her carbon sandwich is a way you can kind of remember that. Um, it's got a question mark on the end because it's not actually a very good mnemonic. This one is called methyl ethanoate because it has a meth group on the right, an eth group on the left, and then in the middle is the ester group, so we call the whole thing methyl ethanoate. O8 is the ending that means ester. Amines are similar again. They have got 
two carbons, or sorry, they've got a number of carbons that are single bonded, a bunch of hydrogens, but they have a nitrogen in an NH2 group on the end. We would call this one ethylamine. Eth because it's got two carbons and then alamine because it's got a nitrogen group present.